Perfect. Right on time. Yeah. All right, you're all set. Okay. I looked for an email from you, Athena, and I couldn't find it. It came it came a little late. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Um, it's waiting for you in your inbox. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. So good evening, everyone. This is your regularly scheduled TSO meeting. It is Thursday, September 28th. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access this meeting may do so uh, by Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of meeting uh, members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So we are recording and I will go ahead and call us to order uh, through roll call. So make sure we can all be heard and hear each other. So uh, Andy. Present. Okay. Dorothy. Um, here. Anna. Present. Paul. Present. And Athena. I'm here. Wonderful. Okay, so let me just see, not see if we have anyone with us, if we have anyone in the audience that would like to make public comment, please raise your hand now and we will bring you in to do so. All right, so we'll go right in and we will move over to the North Pleasant Street upgrades that we will receive an update on where we stand from uh, from Paul. So Paul, I will hand the floor over to you. Great, thank you. So uh, just for context, so this is a, a a memo I provided to the town council in July of 2021 at that time. Um, I noted that there, these were a plan, the plans the Department of Public Works had put together for improvements about of North Pleasant Street, basically from uh, Eastman to um, Pine Street. So it's a very long stretch of of, of uh, the road. However, um, we did not have funding at the time, and so we didn't really put neither the council nor staff put a lot of effort into presenting this or discussing it, um, since there were no de designated funds. Um, so, um, but we did note that this would be something that we'd use as a guide, but it never really had a full public discussion. So I think that that's where we are. Uh, this has come to, uh, be, you know, several issues, a couple of things have come up that have um, alerted or brought it to the attention of counselors so that we did a, a repaving of a stretch of sidewalk on the um, west side of North Pleasant Street from uh, Meadow Street, you know, just beyond where, where the little common area ends. Uh, and so people are pleased with that, but it raised some questions. And then there's also a section closer to Eastman, uh, adjacent to Old Farm Road, that um, the plan calls for the relocation of a bus stop and the neighbors, there's a, there's a development or a new house, uh, two, a duplex being proposed on this parcel. And that became a uh, a question why this was being proposed. And so it had never had that level of detail had not really been brought to the council. So, you know, because it came up a couple of times, it seemed to make sense to, uh, to start having the conversation with you. Right, so I have uh, the, the first question is, is this, will we need to um, bring this is this something that we will need to bring back to the council in order to approve this going forward, even though it seems that parts of it have been implemented already? So it not, the only part that's been implemented is repaving a sidewalk. The relocation of the bus stop has not been done. That's been when the developer was developing it, they went to DPW and they said, well, if you're going to be changing the sidewalk, this is what you should do. And that's in the permitting stage right now. Um, to actually move it will require action by the town council. Okay. And so the referral came, the referral that came in 2021, it was on the carryover report from the previous version of TSO. 
and and you'll see that um, Evan wrote about the outreach that he felt or that the previous committee felt was necessary, but it does require a report back to the council for council action. Okay. Were there any other, any questions? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm missing the point here. You were making a path, but res homeowners, residents said didn't want to cooperate, but now you're still doing it. I'm just, what is, I'm, I'm confused about what the real issue is. Sure. We're just There's no issue. Um, I mean, there could be an issue, I guess, with the bus stop relocation. Uh, the question for the council is, this is a proposal that's before you. Are you prepared to start talking about it and holding a public forum to get additional feedback? There's a, a fair amount of, uh, rec there a fair number of recommendations, including um, small roundabouts and, uh, on the road and things like that, that I think people will definitely, the public will definitely want to have uh, input on. <laughs> well, I just was there. What do you think about it? I, I think we I think it's just going to need some real public discussion. You know, uh, I think it's a good plan. It's it's a, it, we have um, the goal of this is to create a safer way for people to walk along um, mm -hmm. North Pleasant Street. You know, we had the accident there that, that killed a young man. And um, this is a way to start to make the sidewalks more, more coherent, make them broader. There's a lot of people who walk up and down that sidewalk um, and uh just, and I think what we, the goal is, to, if we get approval from the council, that we will start to chip away at pieces of it as you know construction happens or mm -hmm. um, developers are doing a, a project. We can say, hey, when you put in your sidewalk, do it this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Andy? Well, I guess there were several things. One is just uh, since I was on the previous TSO, uh, we had two North Pleasant Street sections that were entirely different from each other that were thrown at TSO at the same time. And the other one was the section along Kendrick Park mm -hmm. with installation of the playground and the reconfiguration of the street and the parking. And because that was just so much more imminent for work, um, that's why we moved forward on that one and just ran out of time and energy to come back to this one because we spent a lot of time on the first um, piece, the, the other that we were handling. Um, I was several questions though that came to mind. Uh, one was that uh, there was really two pieces to it. One was the approval of uh, changes to the public way. And the other was which I, maybe from the finance side, Think, uh, have thought about and that is uh, the financial piece to it what it is that would um, pay for this whether it all comes out of uh, our capital funds for roads and sidewalks or whether there's any additional funds and I'm not sure that we ever had that discussion at any point in any committee uh, and but certainly the uh, we'll do it when funding is available, kind of put chill on having that discussion at all. Um, but I, it, it still is out there as a question that um, I would ask. Um, and I guess the other thing that I thought about, and it may be necessary, but uh, when you have the sidewalk being built along one side of the road and then crossing to the other side of the road with the crosswalk, you're forcing everybody to cross the road. And that it uh, provides uh, safety concerns. Now we did it on Pine Street because we absolutely had to. Uh, this goes uh, back to my select board days, uh, that discussion. But uh, the, if you drive down that road, you'll see that the drop off is so great in one section when um, that you really had to do it. There was no, no other option, but it doesn't carry the volume of walkers and it doesn't carry the volume of walkers at night. Um, and um, um, who may be a little bit more inebriated than a walker along Pine Street in the middle of the day. So has there been any um, analysis of the safety concerns of that approach and 
um, than coming back to the necessity of it. Yeah, so we do not have funding, you know, for, I mean, we, we would use Chapter 90 funding or, um, you know, the town sidewalk monies as we prioritize sections of it. And, and we, you know, if we can seek grants that go along with safe streets, you know, especially adjacent to the university, you know, maybe the university chips in something that those, those are always been our strategies and they have as much concern as we do about the safety of their, because it's primarily students who walk up and down that road. So that's been part of our sort of goal is to um, continue to have that conversation. And they have understood that and uh, want to study this area as well. Um, so in terms of the crossing the road, I'm sure that, I mean, DPW is totally under, they make, they make these designs based on public safety. I'm sure there's a reason why they have to cross. They have recommended that we cross the road where they do, instead of having it one contiguous sidewalk on one side of the road. I don't know the answer to it, quite frankly, Andy, that's a question for the town engineer on why they, why they've designed it that way. Um, this is kind of relevant. Um, we went to the New York area this past weekend and we saw stop signs with little um, solar things above them and little sparkling lights that went on. And I thought, oh, wow, those are good. Um, have we had any thought of putting some of those on our streets? Because they seem to me they really were helpful. I, I don't know if they've looked at putting those in. A lot of communities are starting to put those uh, lit stop signs up. I'm not sure if we have had that consideration or not. I had one other question. Um, I definitely can appreciate with this plan how it widen sidewalks and also to, seems to extend in some of the spaces mm -hmm. where now, if I'm correct, the sidewalk just kind of stops out of nowhere and, and extended this way. So, and then there's also a, so two questions. So there's also a roundabout. Is the roundabout around where the accidents, ha the accident happened that you were talking about one. And then also with the width of the sidewalk, I'm not sure if, if uh, I remember correctly, was this just for a walking pedestrian sidewalk or was this a dual use like um, for, yeah. for biking as well? Yeah, I don't know where the pedestrian accident actually occurred. The um, they put the roundabout, the mini roundabout in at, at Crestview because I think of the to to eliminate the left hand turns coming out of Crestview. Uh, so I think that that was the purpose. But I think that again would be a town engineer conversation. Um, and so the it's they usually we what we're building tend to be multi use paths which are slightly wider than a sidewalk, so you can have a bike path. A bike bicyclist pass a um, a person you know who's walking, and this is basically in the you know there was a proposal before I was here about a bike path that went along the the back end from the university up to and Andy remembers this I'm sure through the back of all the apartment complexes to have people off the road and to have a, a um, bike path that would let people move from Meadow Street down to the university. And there was a lot of barriers to supporting that, especially from property, uh, the apartment complex property owners. And I think they were sort of doing this because we know that people, there's a lot of people traffic on this road and we want to start to improve it along the way. So I guess the question is, does the TSO committee want to take it up? If so, when do you want to start to take it up? Do you want to do it this council or plan it for next year? And but I think it's worth it, even if you think it should happen next year, that we start to calendar it. But I would agree, especially if there's work that has um, started and with the rest of the committee thinks that just to be able to uh, look backwards and especially with our uh, next meeting, we'll be able to, to see a grid of all that we have mm -hmm. uh, for the remainder of the term. So we will be able to, as a committee, really look and see what we feel that we can accomplish and what there will be five more meetings, I believe then, mm -hmm. and you know what we'll package as, as neatly and efficiently for the next council and TSO as well. Uh, because it, it seems you know off a uh, hand that this I, I'm not sure just just thinking off hand if we would be able to get to some of the get some community um, 
input um, and share the word and maybe um, package it up, but I'll, I'll include other, Anna, you haven't, you haven't chimed in yet and then we'll go to Dorothy. Yeah, and and I apologize. This for whatever reason, the memo with all the maps. It so there's like chaos. This there's just simple chaos happening in my home right now, uh, with one creature. There's one creature in here who's wrecking havoc. Anyway, um, point is, Paul, can you specify what work? And I apologize if you said this already, but can you? You said some work has already started. Could you specify what work that is? Um, I, I'm trying to balance both the fact that we have five meetings this absolutely won't get done um, and I, n nothing bad on us. I'm just saying it's not, I don't think we'll do that. Um, and recognize that neighbors are already seeing ground being broken, it sounds like. And so I wanna make sure that mm -hmm. we're able to communicate how it's being dealt with. And and also I, I, I do think at some point we need to backtrack and figure out how it got I mean, this is more of like a process thing of we don't want to hold up DPW, which it sounds like that's why this kind of happened the way it did. So I, I do think at some point we need to interrogate our process. If we're keepers of the public way, we also have a responsibility to address public way issues mm -hmm. it, so that things can still get done. Um, and so I think that's kind of a two parter, uh, I think, dealing with this. But then I also think we need to look at how kind of how this happened the way it did so that mm -hmm. we can prevent that in the future. Um, and then my third question is. You mentioned speaking to the institutions about um, some of the adjustments and yet the maps are, are bogging down my computer for whatever reason today. They, they're not um, letting me scroll around as quickly as I would like. But some of this, um, are, we, are we also looking to some of the larger complexes to um, support this project financially? So we haven't done anything on the financial part on this, uh, you know, um, so I think the the section that's been completed is the section uh, from Meadow Street down uh, to that's uh, the the four of four I think is what the what this one is what it is, um, and I this is where there was the sort of secondary road and it, it adjusted and then you know after conversations with the neighbors and things I think they were pleased with the outcome. Um, the area that is probably the high urgency is nothing's been done on it. It's a, um, when the developer went to the zoning board or planning board, forget who they were before, they said, we're going to relocate the bus stop because DPW asked us, said, this is where the bus stop should be going. And so, and that's what neighbors started saying, what, where, did, where did this come from? And so that nothing has been, there's no groundbreaking or anything like that, but that's the, um, recommendation and, um thank you athena yeah i think that is um number one of four awesome and then do we have an estimate on total cost for this project i i don't know okay those are all it, questions. Yeah. Thank you. this was the idea was as things happen you know like if if someone's you know if there's a, a development happening or the university says they're going to do something we say hey while you're at it here's what we want you to put in yeah so the see the bus stop that's where they're proposing the bus stop on adjacent to Old Town Road. So what I noticed out of this map and thought about before is that uh, this is really where the main part of the sidewalk is actually shifted to the east side of the street. But the bus stop that's causing the uh, Concern is actually on the west side. So uh, it's a part of the drawing because it certainly would be, that was the intent uh, as, as it was drawn. Uh, and of course, buses always pull up to the side of the road that's appropriate for the direction that they're going in. Uh, but uh, it would almost, strike me that um, it is a separate issue and it's the first issue that we need to deal with because of the order of construction is the is that bus stop then it ought to be just dealt with as an isolated issue um, it doesn't seem like um, we have enough urgency or information or capacity to handle the full um, review and i guess uh my last point is that at some point 
but it could actually wait till the next council. I think having the town engineer come in and really explain section by section, if we end up only having to deal with one bus stop, we can just isolate to that discussion. I don't think we need to talk about the whole plan, but at some point a council does need to, and it may make sense given the how close we are now to the end of this council term to just let it wait till the next council term, but to make sure that it's prominent in the memo that we write about issues to carry over. Mm -hmm. Dorothy? Um, my feeling is that I am glad that the town has put together what it thinks its ideas are. Um, my feeling is that we should get money from some of the apartment complexes and from the university. And they're gonna have some ideas of what they want. So once we get that and the town works out what they think can be done, then you have hearings, which will be very lively. I, I don't think that we should go ahead until we know the funding, because I think that there's a really good case to be made for funding to come not from the town for most of this. So, you know, this is maybe the town making its first move, but um, I don't think we should have hearings or do anything on it until we know where the funding is coming from. So would it make sense, I think, to ask the town engineer to come in and make a present overview presentation? Look, here's the concept for the entire road. Here's the specific link, like Andy was saying, let's look at the bus stop if that's if that's still an active issue for the developer and the neighbors. That will generate a lot of interest. There are a lot of neighbors who are concerned about the development and they will have opinions on that. So you could say you could have an overview from the town engineer about what this process is, what this project is and why they believe that they should do what they should be doing. And I hear what you're saying about funding, but it's what we're hoping to do and why we presented it was we know that some of these things happen in piecemeal, you know, and, and to hold, say, no, nothing's going to happen until we have all the funding, which is could take forever, you know? So we, we think we should be doing, have a plan. And then as things start to develop, we, we, we grab that piece and do it. No, I think also what would be great is if um, that also includes perhaps even if it's an estimate of what that what that cost is, uh, and I always think about like the it might make more sense to doing something which is is a uh, piecemeal at this point because even my questions around the bus stop is just I'm also curious as to what was the thought process behind that why is it moving I mean it could be a great thing, but just just in a general question of how how are the stops determined and what, if any, what is the impact on anyone from moving that bus stop, you know? Yeah. So it might be something that's great and serves more people, but, you know, um, I think we know just in, in general with some of the, the way that bus stops are located, especially when they're near uh, apartments that, you know, those who may be in the back, it takes them a lot longer to, you know, to get to the bus stop. So just, I'm just, I'm curious to know why. Yeah, I think, I think the logic, moving. yeah, I'm sorry. Well, no, go ahead. I'm just curious to know why, why, why it's moving and who yep. would be impacted. I mean, it could be something that would be even more convenient for, mm -hmm. for folks who are just curious about that. So typically when they try to locate bus stops is they, bus stops, they try to have them across the street from each other and they're trying to align this with that. They also try to have bus pull off areas. So the buses pull out of the travel lane when they're loading and unloading passengers. And that's, another, they're looking for width of the road where there's room enough to have a, a pull off area. Mm -hmm. And I think in this, and I think they relocated this one a little bit closer to the campus because it's, um, it, 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 it gets people who are getting off the bus closer to the uh, places where they'd probably want to go on campus. So I think, that, but they can explain why, you know, I'm not the engineer who designed it. They had ideas on what they were trying to accomplish. I think it would be just, it would be helpful to. Yeah, absolutely. Get that, get that information, get, sure. get, get refreshed just to be able to package it up as thoroughly as possible. I guess the other thing that I was just going to say is regarding funding. Dorothy brought up a question. I, I shouldn't put it as a question as much as I'm going to, but 
Is there any legal basis for compelling the apartment buildings to contribute to this? I can't think of any. Um, and no, but yeah. Go ahead. But but as people are developing things, like they say, you know, when the university was doing its um, you know, its new university village par apartments, there they had a conversation with DPW about what should the entrance look like. Okay, we want to make sure that there's a bike station there and there's a bus stop there. Let's make sure you put your driveway in alignment with that. That was the situation with the bus stop. Right now, there's a driveway where the proposed bus stop is, and DPW is saying we'd like to minimize the number of intrusions onto North Pleasant Street. We'd like to. The more intrusions you have, the more conflict points you have. So they said, can we swing the driveway to the side street and then be able to put our bus stop there? And if we hadn't had that conversation, they'd put their driveway, their brand new driveway there, and we would never be able to put our bus stop there. And that's why they say, well, wait a minute. When If you're going to be redeveloping that site, let's talk about it. And then while they're putting their money into landscaping and stuff, it can align with the town's goals. So I think that's why this one has some you're right, Andy and, and Anika, about it's worth having that conversation about that particular loca relocation. Yeah, our discussion with the university is really different from our discussion with private but, apartment complexes. Like right, that. right. But this is a private development that's happening right now. That's in, it's in consideration. Oh, well, this is, uh, that's right. This is similar to the one that's uh, almost, or is complete on the, uh, the other end of campus is part of that uh, public private partnership. No, it's a totally, it's a little Greek revival house that they, I think they want to demolish it and put in two duplexes or something like that. But it's the, a, it's a private developer doing it. Oh, it's a private developer. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. So, we will leave it to you, Paul, just to um, see when when is the, I guess, the first date that we can hear a little presentation. Yeah, I think that, I think it is that what, what you think is best route forward? Um, Anika, I think we should look at our planning calendar. I think the next TSO meeting, we have street lights coming back. Um, we have Shalini bringing back her next iteration of the outreach proposal, and then she has some changes to the waste teller. So, yeah. um, okay. so I think there's a lot coming up on the next TSO agenda, and we'll just want to take a look at our agendas going um, forward into the end of the year because they're starting to fill up. And if we want to make space for this before the end of uh, it's what what I'm getting the impression is that folks want to hear about the bus stop change and then leave the rest of the plan for the carryover. Is that what the committee is agreeing to? Okay. Go right through your hand, is it? Uh, right. Um, I I was surprised. I thought we were going to be talking about waste hauler. Um, isn't that something that we're trying to finish? And yeah. what is the timing of that? So um, Shalini and the other sponsors, are, they're proposing some changes my understanding is that the changes will be a sort of initial step to the overall goal andy you can probably speak to this better than i can because you're one of the sponsors so i, I think i ought to leave it to you um but the short answer dorothy is that it's not on the agenda for today because shalini asked for it to be wait to wait until october 12th um, okay. so uh i think if we have that focus on this particular issue with the north pleasant street then we can find time for um, find a time for Jason to come and speak with the committee, but I'm I'm curious what the committee imagines the next steps after that would be for the bus stop issue. If you want to schedule um, a public information session or something like that, then we'll need to start really kind of crunching into the dates that we have left on the calendar and and start to consider how we're going to fit that all in. So if the committee takes this part up with the bus stops and you'd like to finish that before the end of the year, um, I think it might be worthwhile thinking and talking a, a little bit now about what else you'd like to do with this, how much time, if you want to do a special meeting and things like that. Hmm. Anna? 
Yeah, I mean, I think I'm, I like the idea of handling one piece of this and I'm not even sure we can get through anything with the bus stop in five meetings, to be honest with you, when we have so much else on the agenda. Um, And so I think, Athena, it sounds like the other part of your point was what are you expecting to, what is the resolution of the bus stop issue? Um, And I, I kind of have a similar question other than doing outreach and engagement, which I think is important, but what we don't want to do is do outreach and engagement and then council switches over and nothing happens for a long, long time and people feel like they've been abandoned, right? And so I think that we should keep that in mind as we as we look out. I will say though, if we're bringing Jason in to talk about this, I had mentioned this um, earlier to Anika, we had also talked about Paul getting another update from Jason doing a similar presentation on um, pavement, paving. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I know that I've gotten two new requests in the past week to know where specific roads are on the agenda. So um, if, if that could be, I know that, I know we're playing with really limited time here and I'm asking for something that's not an action, but it is something that we talked about doing in TSO and, and we mentioned to the public that we would be doing again for them to see. And so I think that it would be uh, important for us to, I, I thought we had talked about this. And, and if I'm completely making it up, then tell me that and I will happily go on my merry way. But if that's possible, that'd be great. Well, there's, I think the last time we talked about paving, there's like a priority list of streets, right? Can uh-huh. Anna, would it be acceptable to just have an update on the priority list of streets? Or are you looking for more of a TSO conversation? Um, I mean, I think there's different levels of acceptability, right? I'd love an updated priority list. I think that would be really helpful. Um, and then I guess if we took that and referred people back to the old presentation, maybe for the, in the interim, that would, that would suffice um, if we're, if we're crunching time. So Paul, so is that something that Paul can share in, in, in a future town manager report or is that something you want as a TSO agenda item? So I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a conversation. It's not just, oh, here's the next list. It's not street on the list. I think it is. A, but know. is there a decision point that the committee can make or that the council can make in terms of what streets are going to get paved? It's really the DPW who chooses that based on you know, the available funds, and like we went out to bid, we didn't have enough money for all the ro- we didn't have enough money for all the roads, and so now they're sort of revising that. Um, I mean, I think you're what we're trying to do is budget the amount of time the council, the TSO committee has, and just each one of these things is an hour, right? So if you say we have five means we have ten hours, how do you want to budget your time? I, I think you, if you open up the roads discussion, um, that's an hour probably. I totally get that. And I'm, I understand if, and I think once per council would be great. I believe the last time we talked about it, we talked about doing it once a year. Yep. Um, the reason is, and I know that there's no decision point for the council and, but the reason is that this is the number one thing we get outreach about. Right. And mm-hmm. so I want to make sure that we are informed enough to be able to talk to our, our constituents about it, even yep. though we don't have any decision-making power. Um, and so knowing where, for example, Hulst road is on that list mm-hmm. and, and, kind of what, and I know that they don't give timelines for it. And I know they don't, I, I get that. That makes sense to me, but, you know, understanding roughly how many roads we've been getting through or how many feet of road we've been getting through a year, or whatever it is, yep. all of that is helpful. So yep. I don't know that it needs to be an hour long agenda item, Athena, to your point, but I do think a detailed, even just a detailed memo update would be really helpful with kind of what, what the road list is and kind of what even honestly, the current <laughs> cost per per um, Mm -hmm. hundred feet or whatever, that, that is really helpful for, um, I'll speak for myself, for me, when I talk to my constituents about why their road hasn't been paved yet. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause that does come through us. And, and usually also it's because they've exhausted other avenues because this is uh, for everybody, you know, and I know that you all hear it a lot. It's a ton of interest in it, right? Yeah, I think you're right. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Andy. Yeah, to follow up on what Anna just said is my first uh, topic, and that is that uh, I think it is also helpful because it is a DPW decision for the council to understand why the DPW has made the decision to prioritize one road as the next to be done. And they usually have very good reasons having to do with uh, both cost and what the seriousness of the road is in comparison to others, but and it's easier to explain uh, to a constituent 
why the other road is getting priority if you have some of that information yep. even if it wasn't a council decision so um you know as we go forward that's one thing that i observed would be very helpful because i i get in my own neighborhood and i do you know my, my standard answer is uh drive down heatherstone and tell me if you think the street is worse than heatherstone and uh you know, at least I have something to say, but uh, yeah. having something that's actually a little bit more intelligent than that would be helpful too. Um, the uh, I think we are at a point of uh, uh, really needing to put our uh, topics. One of my other disappointments about uh, TSO in the last in this term is that we never got the discussion of what the towns can do in controlling speed limits and what the town cannot do. And what is the process if we can do something but need to study it? Um, and I think that that's a presentation that was made to the first council by uh, then Captain Ting and uh, Jason. Uh, and a similar presentation to the next council and the beginning for a more robust discussion about speed limits, I think ought to be in the carryover memo because uh, not only are we starting to limit, to, to schedule what we do for the rest of this term, but we need to start thinking about the carryover memo too. And I would put the speed limits into that category because I know that it's of concern to a number of uh, people, uh, residents, and uh, to at least assure them that there's a that we're that the council will move on it um, and try and develop the, um, a better understanding and start to do that. Um, as far as uh, since that uh, Dorothy had raised the issue some point ago about the trash hauler. Um, it is, um, you know, we, we would like to move on it. Uh, one of the problems is that um, we're all getting into a time crunch is we've got multiple things on our place, some of us including trying to uh, run for re-election. And uh, the, uh, so the, the, there's uh, varying amounts of time availability even amongst the sponsors. So that's one of the problems. Uh, Shalini, who's not running for re-election, has really spent a lot of time and done some very good work on it, but she hasn't had an opportunity to communicate much with the rest of the sponsors in any kind of robust way. So um, we're in, in the other piece that's in there is that um, we are still waiting for um, the uh, RFI to be back and an analysis to be done and a presentation to be made uh, to the committee. And I think that's the next step to really uh, understand what's going forward. Shalini has uh, put together by looking at other communities around the country, a potential uh, a kind of a really to try and develop a matrix of issues that might be addressed in the bylaw or that might be considered in discussion in the bylaw even you could say but there hasn't been any time to do that i um and i think that we really need to get that discussion at some point um uh, but that may be what we can do and i think that the last point i'm going to raise on uh trash hauling and then I'm going to give up the floor, is that um, there's been some discussion amongst uh, the sponsors as to what is most appropriate to implement by bylaw and what is most appropriate to implement by regulation. And uh, furthermore, whether the regulations come from the legislative or uh, executive branch. And I think those are um, important issues to be considering as we go forward with this, because 
there are going to have to be, as there, as we've discovered in some of our other discussions, like street lights and rental registration, um, things you want to put in a bylaw and, and really have given more formal status, and things that you want to put in regulation and have more flexibility. And uh, I think that as we get the uh, presentation of the RFI, we'll be in a better position to have that discussion because there are a few things that uh, it's possible that uh, we could ask the uh, public uh, the health board to consider uh, and uh, because they're the ones who promulgated the current regulation and we could make a recommendation to them uh, for uh, on things to consider. So that's kind of the brief report. Thank you, Andy. Athena, did you have a response to that before we go to Dorothy? Um, yes, thank you. I I totally agree with you, Andy, about the carryover report. What we had discussed when the the um, acceptance of the MGL Chapter ninety eighteen B that the committee voted on at the last meeting um, is on the council agenda for Monday, and I think. When I spoke with Lynn, the idea was that that would be an initial step to deal with this bigger issue of speed limits that's going to stay in TSO because adopting or accepting that MGL is just, it just gives the council authority, but then a bunch of other things need to be done in order to create those safety zones. Um, and that would be still within TSO to continue to work on that in the next term. And then there's another MGL that would need adopted to um, address the, I think it's the um, the uh, the densely settled areas or something like that, or establishing this, the speed limit of 25 miles per hour townwide. So, so all of those other speed limit issues are gonna stay within TSO and, and um, I'm hoping that I can help Anika with the carryover report and pull documents together so that the next iteration of TSO doesn't have to start from square one. And the other thing about the um, waste haulers is that this is starting to feel uh, confusing because um, I'm getting the impression that Shalini is speaking on behalf of the sponsors. And so I'm a little concerned that you as a sponsor are not 100% on the same page with Shalini. So um, she is asked for time on the next committee agenda to present what she says are sponsor changes to the bylaw and regulations that she wants to move on more quickly than the part that has to do with the RFI. Um, so I'm hoping that you and the other sponsors can get together with Shalini or speak with Shalini and, and get on the same page because I think there's gonna be a lot of confusion about what's going on and what steps need to be taken and, and so forth if we're hearing a proposal that doesn't match the initial proposal and that sponsors haven't signed off on. Um, and it sounds like it's already out there to some point, to some extent, because we've heard from Zero Waste that we saw an email from Zero Waste about their yeah. um, lack of support for the new changes. So um, hopefully that can happen before the next committee meeting. I, thank you, Athena. I 100% I, um, I agree. I know that there have been so many who have put so much effort and, and energy into this um, that it, I think it is really important that everyone is, is on the same page. And I think, you know, some of us were under the impression that everyone was, and it's clear that that's not the case. So, uh, Dorothy. Um, th this is a question, I, I guess. A, a, a block I've brought up many times is a block between on Lincoln Avenue between Northampton and Am Amity, which is a dis disastrous block. And it crossed my mind the other day as I saw the line of construction vehicles lined up as part of the big overhaul of Route 9 that somebody said, let's wait to do that block until after that project is over, in which case I would say, oh, that was a good idea. So I'm just wondering if that guess has any reality. Those types of things are always taken into consideration. They don't repay the road when there's a major construction project going on. So when the project is finished on Route 9, it, 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 as I don't think that block is on the list. 
And yet, it's I think one of the- I think Dorothy, we might be wading into too far off on a tangent. I think we were talking right. about some of these other things in terms of agenda planning, which right, right, future agenda or upcoming agenda a- items is on our agenda, but not getting into the meat of an issue. So I think talking about paving in terms of pl- placing them on an agenda is cool, but getting into the nitty gritty, I think we should try and limit. I'm I'm sorry to ask you to save it. <laughs> But it sounds like Paul can answer that question perhaps for you offline. Uh-huh. All right, I think. Okay. So, are there any other questions or comments? So, I think the question that we left off with was how much, what's the committee's idea of, of how much is going to get done with bus stops? with these particular bus drops on North Pleasant? I mean, you know, it sounds like one meeting should just be dedicated to DPW. Let them come in and talk about the things that they, I don't know if we have that meeting available or not, Athena. It, it's really gonna depend how much time waste hauler takes, how much time street lights takes, how much time um, the outreach part takes, how many other appointments there are, and the time that we have to work on the carryover memo. So I think just those things are fairly significant and carving out an entire meeting for DPW, I think could be putting the committee under a little bit of strain unless they're willing to add a meeting. Shalini had um, brought up the issue of adding a meeting in November, I think another meeting in November. Um, so I think that's that's what I'd like the committee to dis- discuss. That, is- that was also, if I am mistaken, was like a meeting that was strictly hauler. Right. That was that was strictly hauler, but it sounds. I mean, it sounds like if if committee is willing for that, so that was for November sixteenth. If, if that does work for the committee, maybe that could be a time for that. We could do that. Is is there anyone offhand that is that knows that they are either willing or not willing to be able to accommodate an extra meeting on Thursday, November 16th? It looks like I can, but I'm not. Yeah, I'd consider it. Um, I think Hannah had said something earlier about the question of the bus stop that I had agreed with, which was that having the discussion about the North Pleasant Street budget bus stop really depends upon DPW saying that they are ready to move on something and that they would like to get clarity in, um, of the council's position on it. Um, within a reasonably short window, um, I don't know that we would want to isolate the discussion and have a long discussion about bus stop, which would require a hearing and a um, lot of interaction with the neighbors and doing that unless it's um, necessary. And it, it, it sounds to me like we need input, Paul, from um, you and DPW about whether you're recommending that we allocate the time to it. So just to be clear, this is not a, the DPW has made a proposal that it delivered to the council in 2021. A, a developer came forward with a plan to um, develop a piece of property on North Pleasant Street. When these pre- plans come to the town, we'd circulate them with all the departments the Department of Public Works said, wait, you know, we had proposed we are putting a bus stop in front of this parcel. And if you're going to build something there, we suggest, they said, what, what's your technical advice? They said, we suggest you put the driveway on the side street, not on North Pleasant Street, because at some point down the road, we're going to want to put a bus stop in here where, if the council approves. It's not something we're saying we're going to do. It, it came up because of a private development that's been proposed. So, but it, it does you know, then so the people, the folks are saying, well, did the council approve this? No, the council has not approved this. It's a DPW proposal, but it's the one that's on the table 
um, as we look forward. So that's the, there's not a, like we're about to build anything or anything like that. It's a proposal for the future. That's why it's a little bit, it's a little bit odd, you know, quite yeah, honestly. I, I get it. Thank you. That's a good explanation. Um, but it's still back to the same point that we need advice as, you know, like if you're needing to tell the planning board of the ZBA, whoever's uh, the issuer of the, the, you know, is, is authorizing the construction and the design, uh, we need to know the urgency that they need an answer in order to determine our own urgency. Yeah, I don't know the schedule. I can dig that out though for you. I'll ask Chris about that. And I'm also just thinking, uh, you know, walk, walk me through this. I'm also just thinking from the standpoint of the carryover report and just bringing it up to date. Because if we're talking about something that in that to some extent, you know, work has been started on, does that change this plan at all from, from where it was just to be able to wrap it, to make sure that all of the information, if anything, needs to be um, updated? Because I know we're talking about this is something that, in one hand, it hasn't started yet, and it's a proposal, but yet some of it has. So um, those financial Im impacts that have that would have been accumulated thus far. And then as far as like going that forward, just to I guess be really be able to thoroughly update this carryover item. In a way that both we and you know the public will understand clearly. Mm -hmm. So now what? Let me throw this out there. <laughs> if if okay, if there is the possibility that we have one more meeting um, that we add the sixteenth, uh, if necessary, where it it seems like you know we it, it could be if necessary that um, we might be able to to move things around and see what we can do in terms of whether we will have an update, a larger discussion with DPW and put that in, um, you know, clearly with another agenda item or two. Does that seem to make the, the most sense? And then I guess what we could do is have have a greater plan for that for the next meeting that we could sort together as a committee. Um, you and I can work on that a little bit mm -hmm. in between Anika and because I, I do have a spreadsheet. Um, yes. One thing I wanted to mention in terms of the upcoming meeting dates, TSO had scheduled a meeting on December 21st, which is after the last council meeting. So it might not be worthwhile having that. Um, so we would actually be back. It, if the only thing that we would be doing then is just approving minutes because you'll have turned in your carryover memo and so forth before the 18th. Okay. So we might want to either think about canceling that one or or moving it to the 14th or or something like that. But we can talk about that and, okay. and uh, bring a plan to the committee at the next meeting. Sounds perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you everyone for that. Okay, so we are going to move on to town manager appointments. Back to you again, Paul, if you have to walk us through. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Anika. These are pretty straightforward ones. The first one is for the Board of Assessors. Um, I'm asking you to approve Nick Grabe of 84 Ames Street. Um, board of Assessors is a small board, three members. It's an important board, but it also requires uh, members to go th to a school to learn about assessing. And we really like someone who's going to be committed for six years, two terms at least, to seek the school, you know, go through the schooling and then be able to work with the principal assessor. You will see them shortly because you'll be look, setting, looking at tax classification hearing. Um, and that's one of their important tasks, but also they hear appeals from people about their property values and things like that. Uh, 
uh, Mr. Grabe is, has interviewed with the chair of the board of assessors and the principal assessor and understands the commitment that's expected and is willing to do that. Welcome, Sanders. It's seriously, I have a motion for you. If you're, if you're ready. For it. All right. Uh, I move for the town services and outreach committee to recommend to the town council, the town manager appointments of Nick appointment of Nick Grabe to the board of assessors for a term to expire June 30th, 2025. Second. Thanks, Andy. I'll do roll call. There's just didn't ask. Was there anyone who had anything to say? All right, moving on. Dorothy. Yes. Andy. Yes. Anna. Aye. And I and I as well. So that is unanimous. So Thank you. Ask. The next appointment is a Community Preservation Act committee appointments. These are the um, appointments from the committees. So there, we've we we've done the Recreation Commission and the Housing Authority and the Historical Commission. There's two other seats: one for the Conservation Commission, one for the Planning Board. The Conservation Commission has designated Michelle Labbe. Uh, as their representative, and the planning board has designated Doug Marshall as their representative. Any comments? Anna? Um, I have a comment first, which is that Michelle's amazing, and so I'm really excited for her to serve on, on CONCOM. Um, not on CONCOM, whatever, on CPA. CPA, so on yeah. CONCOM. Yeah, sorry. Not whatever. Critical committees. I adore both of them. Um, all right. I move for the town services and outreach committee to recommend to the town council, the town manager appointments of from the conservation commission, Michelle Labbe and from the planning board, Doug Marshall to the community preservation act committee for a term each to expire June 30th, 2024. Second. And. And. Who are you calling? I think Sorry. you're muted. Andy. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> yes. Dorothy. Yes. Anna. Hi. And I am an I as well. Another Great. unanimous one absent. Thank you. The last one is for the elementary school building committee. As you know, uh, we've had uh, two departures from the committee, and I am uh, asking to approve uh, Doug Slaughter to take the seat of the superintendent of schools and uh, Jennifer LaFountain to take the seat of the finance director. There will be one more seat that needs to be filled, which is from the school committee. And now that they're fully constituted, I talked with the two remaining members last Tuesday night, whenever you voted and they and asked them to put on the agenda to select a school committee member who would represent the school committee on the, and that will to on the elementary school building committee. So they will bring that forward. So tonight it's Doug Slaughter and Jennifer LaFountain. Thank you. Thanks to both of them. There are no comments and back to you, Anna. All right. I move for the town services and outreach committee to recommend to the town council, the town manager appointments of interim superintendent of schools, Douglas Slaughter and interim finance Dir director, Jennifer LaFountain to the elementary school building committee for terms that last until the end of the MSBA process. Second. Thank you, Andy. Anna. Aye. Dorothy. Yes. Andy. Yes. And I am an I, so that is another unanimous with one absent. Thank you very much. All right, now we will move on to approving the minutes. Did everyone have a chance to, to look? A while ago. Uh, I don't think, I don't think I put them in the packet. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Nobody had a chance to look. I'm sorry about that. I've been behind. I must have pulled. I must have been looking at the last ones and didn't even. <laughs> so I should have just let him. But you. Yeah, we like read it. Read okay. All right. I, I appreciate that vote of confidence, but you you haven't seen them, so <laughs> it might be more wise to wait. We will, and I, we I'm will sorry. Absolutely, would have to get myself. And what am I looking at? I, I thought I could. I do trust time. you, but I did, you know, I've okay. Agendas and minutes look really similar. It's fine. 
um okay so uh, the agenda we have well we'll you know we'll report back um for the next uh, meeting where i mean we do know that we will have hauler uh and that we will have um street lights okay and then we will have if well i guess we also have a uh, shalini's outreach proposal so that next agenda is packed everyone so we're um we're buying some time tonight to rest up for that. Um, did anyone have an announcement to make? Anything to share? Well, I have a big thank you. Um, I had the pleasure of um, curating a program last week with the Porter Phelps Huntington Museum. And I was just so pleased. I mean, the Amherst community certainly um, yeah. did come out and represent uh, thank you, Dorothy, for being there. There were I, I really didn't see everyone that was there, but um, you know, really, really thankful for that. Um, and I had I had the pleasure of talking with a class today at, at Amherst College with some students who were there, and they really, um, you know, just ex expressed their just I mean, you know, they're like little light bulbs, and they're just so energized and love to learn about this history and bringing it on to Amherst and just had so many questions. I walked them through the exhibit there and they are just, you know, really diving into um, the history of this town, the the indigenous and black history of this town. And it was just really amazing to, to spend that time with them and really see how this community really showed up for these folks who are enslaved that are really connected to our community here. Um, and some of them passed away here and were, you know, certainly married into families here. So it was just really um, heartwarming. So I just wanted to really extend a big giant thank you uh, for that. Uh, Dorothy. Well, I had almost going to say something, but I wasn't sure if it was on topic, but it was absolutely an incredible program. And it, it exemplified using every modality to teach um, objects that you look at, places that you go to, mm. and using the wonderful voices. It was wonderful hearing Anna Wumi again, and uh, Shirley Jackson Whitaker is so great. Um, and so even sitting out in the cold, in the damp, under a temporary <laughs> thing with all kinds of people standing around, it was incredible. Um, so I really, I really want to really thank you so much, Anika, for bringing this. And you must have done great publicity because the people came. They came. And they were just, you know, wonderful group of people. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. And Anna, you have an announcement. Uh, it's more of a, a thank you. And, you know, I know the folks aren't in this meeting, but I the other thing that happened last week was the block party. Um, mm -hmm. And yes. it, it was also really incredible. Um, there were so many people. I dragged my poor father out. He doesn't like people. And so he was very excited. he's going to be mortified if the, he if ever watches this meeting. Um, but he, we went out and like walked around, which was great. And I just wanted to highlight the, so from people like my dad to then my, uh, my partner's sister, who's a UMass student texted me and was like, are you at this block party thing? It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. um, and so it was really, a, you know, and she and her roommates went right over the recreation booth and had temporary tattoos. And I don't know if they came off the next day, but you know, I feel like it was just, there was something for every single person there. Uh, and it was really incredible to see the town staff and our local businesses and restaurants. And uh, it was, it was beautiful and the music and, and performing acts were great. So I just wanted to publicly offer some, some kudos for that as well, because I know that that is an incredible amount of labor that goes into doing that. Um, and thank you to our fire department for relocating everything. I mean, everybody, right? Like I know that there's so much that goes into it. So there were, that was amazing. Anyone, the people everyone. had walkie talkies. I really wished we had them. That was my <laughs> first. Um, that was my first block parties. I'd been. I wasn't here when they started, and then you know, pandemic, of course. And then last year, you know, we were here in TSO. The, yeah, oh, right. Before, so <laughs> yeah, it was uh, my first block party experience, and it was it was great. I enjoyed it, Dorothy. Um, one one of the things that was new was the very strong presence of Amherst College, um, living up to the promise of the the new president, and the incredible amount of activities for children. And as it got darker, those children looked so serious, and they're sitting at their little tables doing their <laughs> projects, and they were not ready to go home. And it was like, would they be that good in school? I mean, it was it was really neat. Um, so it was it was really well done. 
Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun. And I noticed the the senior center, they had a popular table. I feel like they had everyone. Yeah, the director, she had like all the glow sticks and all she had all of the kids there piled at her table. I feel like I didn't name the the business improvement district as the primary sponsor and the cultural council um uh for holding down the stage. I think I wanted to sp specify those two groups who who did I believe the the bid and the Downtown Amherst Foundation did a all the the like breakdown mm -hmm. or at least I saw them in a golf cart at you know 10 p.m. So they, I believe they, they did all the prep. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Mm -hmm. So thank you to those folks. That was great. All right everyone. So with that we are adjourned. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Bye.